of freedom buried in the ground mother will swallow you Find the cause of freedom buried in the ground. We do, Heavenly Father, thank Thank you for for all those that have given of their time, of their lives, even the ultimate sacrifice. I know it says through your son's words, no greater love hath a man than he lay down his life for his friends. Be with all of those, Lord God, wherever they are, those who have served, those who are serving now. Send your guardian angels down to watch over, protect them, and be with their families as they are separated one from another. Help them all know your love, your care, your strength, your guidance, and especially your love. Thank you for all those who work so diligently to maintain our freedom. We thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and uh, that's the day that we remember the work of the Holy Spirit. And that third uh, person in the Holy Trinity that we don't talk that much about. Um, As I like to say, we start as Lutherans our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because we don't want to wake them up. Uh, Because he gets us to do things that are very interesting in our lives. He gets us to go places we wouldn't go. He gets us to do things we wouldn't do. He gets us to think in a different way. He gets us to speak with tongues of angels. But we're going to talk about that. And uh, to begin with, we're going to start with a very um, familiar song. It's a beginning of service song that we use throughout the year. And it's Old Holy Spirit, Enter In. So if you'll turn to hymn 913 in your hymn book, or we have the words up, up above, you can choose.
as fire it Shall we rise as we join in our order of service, our divine service setting four? You can follow along. It begins on page 203 in your hymn book, or we have it up on the screens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Therefore, you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our intro for today, that time we enter into the presence of God, we're going to use Psalm 25, and today we're going to read this in unison. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. 
All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land, the friendship of the Lord. And he makes known to them his covenant. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, and let us pray these words together, shall we? O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Ella is going to be sharing with us some interesting words about the working of the Spirit from the Old Testament and in the Acts of the Apostles. the day of Pentecost comes from Numbers chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders and the people and placed them around the tent. And then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And as they prophesied in the and so they prophesied in the camp, and a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, and Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth said, 
My Lord Moses stopped them, but Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them, and Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mockingly said they were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as supposed, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, that great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you. You did wonderfully on all those names. Shall we rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel as Dan shares with us? Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Dan. As we remain standing, let us confess in what we believe in Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, begotten God of very God, begotten not made, King of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one in the Christian and apostolic church, one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us sing another of our spirit songs, O Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. That's hymn 650. Come on, Spirit, light my fire. Set this dark day on fire. I know, I think in terms of music. My son calls it the soundtrack of my life. I was driving along the other day, and my wife says, aren't you going to turn something on in the radio? And I said, no, a little peace and quiet is nice. 
She didn't take the hint. She kept on talking, but... <laughs> oh, I'm teasing. Sure I am. We are talking about the Holy Spirit today. And we're talking aloud about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is rather uncomfortable for us to speak about. Because He makes us uncomfortable. You've heard that a pastor comes into a church, he's here to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Well, that's what a spirit does. He afflicts the comfortable. Just about the time you're getting cozy in your faith. Just about the time you're feeling, yeah, I've got this down. i got this gig covered. Just about that time you feel like your life is all in order, the Spirit comes in and starts to bug you and starts to turn your life over and around. I was retired, remember, before I was called by Jeff Little over a year ago, and here I am. Because when the Spirit wants you to do a thing, you do a thing. He doesn't force you. Years ago, I to show an example of this, my grandson, who is now 24, was a little bitty guy. Maybe he was four years old. And I said, come here, Aiden. And I said, Aiden, walk with me down the aisle. So he started to walk, and I had my, my finger just in the little belt loop in the back of his pants. And I started going like this. And he's like, you know, a drunken sailor on a windy night, you know. And he's going this way, and he's going, there, Grandpa! But that's the way the Spirit is. He doesn't force you. He just gets that finger in that little belt loop. And if He wants you to go to the right, you go to the right. If He wants you to go to the left, you go to the left. And we don't like that. We don't like to be out of control. We are control freaks. We who are German Lutherans, well, you who are German Lutherans, are control freaks. You don't like things to be out of order, do you? You don't like things to be out of place. And yet we're told, in the words of Jesus, He's talking to Nicodemus, and what does He tell him? He says, you've got to be born of water and the Spirit. Remember that? We just talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And He says, the Spirit blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. He's a bothersome house guest who doesn't always ask to be let in. He just comes in. If you leave the door open, the Spirit will come in. If you leave the windows open, He will come in. Now, you can shut the door on Him. You can say, no, I don't want you in here. No way, no way, Jose. But if you leave it open, He will come in. And you've heard me describe Him before, like the mother-in-law. And the mother-in-law who's there to watch your dogs, dogs and cats while, while you're on vacation. vacation. And, and she, she starts going through your stuff. I know, I know that, that never happens in real life. life. Looks, Looks all your photo albums, albums turns, turns on, on your, your computer. computer. She, she can, can guess your password. She's your mother-in-law. Looks, Looks at all your files. Looks, Looks at all of the history of what you've been looking at through Google and Explore. He... She is there to, to look through all your closets and all your drawers. Is that uncomfortable? You men? She goes and looks under the car seat. That's where she gets all her spare change. And what is she going to find when she looks at all of these places? Well, that's the way the Spirit is, but He's even more invasive. He comes right on in, and He looks, and He throws all the bed covers back. He throws the mattresses over in our lives. He looks in every little crook and cranny in our brain, and you're going, no, no, I want to keep this little space. This is mine. This is my space. And He goes, no, it isn't. He drags all those old things out and throws them out in the front yard in the sunshine for all the neighbors to see. And somebody's always watching. Now, I know I've said these things before. Didn't you hear many, many times in your life, don't play with fire? I was told that many times as a child because I was enamored with fire. I mean, look at that stuff, will you? I used to have a, a big uh, magnifying glass, and you ought to see how that thing that will burn things. And my 
grandmother was appalled that I was taking blades of grass and getting the ants to go up them, and I was destroying them with the laser ray from above. And whoop, oh, how'd that burn mark get in my pant leg and in my shirt? Don't you play with fire, Michael! How many times have I told you? Well, you know what? I have been playing with fire for 38 years. The fire that comes down from above. That fire that was laid upon Moses in the Old Testament. That kind of fire that makes you uncomfortable. The fire that makes you speak things that you would otherwise not speak. Live in places that you otherwise would not live. I wouldn't live in Washington, Illinois, if not for him. And it's not because I don't like the place, but why would I come here? I would move to outside of Mariposa is where my relatives come from. There used to be a little town called Fishhook. Somewhere down there. I found it one time. It's on one little map. It's outside of Mariposa. That's where I would go with the circles and the millers. Why here? He gets you to do things that you otherwise wouldn't do. How otherwise would you be taking meals to people that need meals? How otherwise would you be crossing across the street to make sure that lady's okay who's laying out there in the front yard? I found out she was just working in her garden. It was very embarrassing. But at least she was okay. That's the kind of thing that we do. And that's the kind of thing that God's Spirit does. He comes inside of us. He gets a hold of us. At baptism, when we were baptized with that water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, He got inside of us. And He's not going to go. He never leaves us. Never leaves us. Now the demons, you can say, get out in the name of Jesus. But you can't say, get out, Holy Spirit. He doesn't go that easily. He doesn't want to get out. And you are still baptized in His name no matter what you do and where you go. Now that's not scary, is it? That should be comforting to all of us who believe in our Lord and Savior. But you know, I'm here to talk about somebody that we do play with. There's a play date. We always set these things up, don't we, in today's world? I don't understand that. I used to just go outside and my mother, you know, when it got dark, she'd go, Michael! And you just walk up down the street. Remember in the good old days where there was no air conditioning and all the windows were open and the screen door was there and you just come up and go, Can Kenny come out to play? Am I aging here before your eyes? Now they call up and say, Hi, this is Gwendolyn. Yeah, Margie, can... Can Freddie come over and play with uh, little Becca? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to set it up for 145. Okay, 145 until what? 310? Okay, okay. We'll be there. Okay. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. He just shows up. Drives up in your driveway. Unexpected relative. He's there like that movie with Randy Quaid and, you know, Dennis Quaid. He comes up in his RV right there and pulls in front of your yard. Sinks his tire in your lawn. That's the way the Holy Spirit is. And he comes right on inside and looks in your icebox and he starts popping your beers from your fridge. Unexpected, uninvited. But he comes into us for a special reason to create faith. He's the one that creates the faith when we hear the Word of God. And if you leave those windows and doors open, yeah, He'll come in. There's power in the Scripture. They call it the authority of Scripture to convince us of the truth of it. And it's the Spirit that does that work. And He works on us each and every day of our lives. We are a beautiful artwork. We are like a painting that He just keeps coming and repainting over and over again. And sometimes it looks like a Jackson Pollock. And sometimes it looks like impressionism and sometimes it looks like photorealism it depends on what the need is and it depends on what the spirit needs you to do at that particular place and who you need to impress to come and have a look you see we're busy in our church always putting out fire we're good at that we're putting out fires we're always dealing with all the issues of the world and our uh, President Harrison, in good faith, Matthew Harrison is addressing all the problems of this world, you know, that there is reason even to rejoice in the midst of sadness, in the midst of chaos. We're always putting out fires. 
And that's what you feel like you're doing too. Everybody's calling up. If you're like me, every time the phone rings, you're going, oh God, somebody needs something. And they do. I mean, how often, or a pastor is even worse. How often do you call up your doctor and say, doctor, <laughs> I'm going to make an appointment. No, there's nothing wrong. I just feel so good. I want to come in and visit with you. I wanted to talk to you. No, no problem. They think you're out of your mind. And it, I, never, I do get a call once in a blue moon when they call up and say, Pastor, I'm just feeling great today. It's usually something going on, and you're thinking, here we go, running the put-out fires. And a lot of them are the little bitty fires, but if you let them go, they all seem to come together and turn into some conflagration that's about to tear the church down when individually each and every one of those little problems don't amount to much of anything. Well, the Spirit comes along and He sets it all on fire. Just sets it all on fire. <laughs> like when you're a kid, you know, you think, I used to play, remember when we used to play Army? Did anybody actually play Army when they were a kid? Man, I had the old Tommy guns and I, have, I had the whole thing. I had a miniature flamethrower. It wasn't really a flamethrower, but I thought it was. <laughs> That's what the Spirit does. Burn it down. It's necessary in order to raise it up again. That makes us uncomfortable to talk about that. We're putting out fires, but we should be lighting them. Spiritual fires, not real. Oh, the pastor just said we all should go out and commit arson. Okay, I want you to go out and commit spiritual arson. Remember what happened in the Old Testament? And that's silly, right? The 70 elders are out there and they receive some of the spirit that Moses has gotten. And Eldad and Medad weren't there, right? But they started prophesying anyway, and there's this guy who runs up and goes, Moses, they're prophesying, and they didn't come to the meeting. And Moses says, hey, what, I'm zealous and jealous of the spirit that I've been given? I would that all people would prophesy. You can't bottle them in. You can't make them fit some little corner of your life. You can't say you're going to go this far and no further. And it works that way in a church too. I would that the Holy Spirit would come and not alight upon the heads of everyone in here, but would set himself up under the seats and make us uncomfortable and get up and start speaking the Word of God. Somebody one time told me, that's imagery I would rather not have, Pastor. If you don't want to remember that memory, you just go, I watched the program one time. Every time you don't want to hear it or remember it, just go, when I leave here, you can do that. When you get your new pastor, you can just go. <laughs> but the Spirit is there for that reason. And I said, we have to start our lives and start our services and start everything we do in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't have time to talk about the gifts. Oh man, they really mess Lutherans up. Woo! Because we don't know what to do with all this stuff, but the speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, this faith healing, you know, and all this crazy stuff you hear. Oh, we're supposed to be apostles and preachers and teachers, and some are given this and some are given that. And Paul says, oh no, you don't all have to speak in tongues and to be a Christian. A thumb doesn't get mad because it's not a toe. And that really gets a little bit hairy for us because we don't like talking about that because that really makes us a bit uncomfortable. What three things does it take for fire to work? What do you have? You have fuel, right? You got, me yeah, Metallica has a song about it, so, you know, give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Fuel, you need air. Oxygen is in that air, and you need a heat source, right? Well, in our lives, the fuel is the Word of God. That's what fuels this whole thing. That's what the Holy Spirit uses. And although the Spirit blows where He will, He consigns Himself and limits Himself to what is in the pages of Holy Scripture. And He does that for us. He doesn't have to, but He does. So that we're not confused. So that we know that He's never going to tell us anything that's not in here. Or lead us astray from anything that's not in here. And if you're hearing some Spirit that's trying to tell you to go somewhere else and do something else, it's not the Holy Spirit. So you have to discern the spirits. We got the air, the pneuma, the ruach, 
That is the Spirit of Almighty God. And you have the heat source, what's that? That's that faith. And it keeps turning up and up and up. At my house all the time, my wife's either hot or cold. She says the parsonage is cold. And to me, it's comfortable because I'm always hot. I wake up, you know, I, I take medicine and I wake up in, in cold sweats, hot sweats, actually, all night long. Every time I move too much, I burst out into these hot sweats. Poor me, I can't keep the weight off, and I have night sweats, and I cry at old share movies. And I have an oncologist saying, you're just going through your menopause for the rest of your life. It's like, she goes, think of it this way. It's you're actually pre-adolescent going into adolescence forever. It's like, well, thank you for that vote of confidence. And she says, don't worry about it because you also have heart problems and you'll die of a heart attack well before you have any problems with the prostate cancer. She's just warm and fuzzy. It makes me feel really good to go and see her. But we have the fuel, God's Word, the Spirit, and that faith that He creates in our hearts so that ultimately, ultimately, we can cry out, Come on, Spirit, light my fire. We prophesy. What does it say? Old men dream dreams. Young men prophesy. Old men dream dreams. It's kind of interesting. As in the prophet uh, Joel that says these things will happen in the last days. Well, we're all in our last days because we live and die and after that comes the judgment. But thanks be to God that He has that Spirit, that Spirit that comes to us. He doesn't care if you acknowledge Him. He's the most humble of beings that ever could be because He always wants to push you towards Jesus. We say, come Holy Spirit. That's why we have that there. And if the Holy Spirit will come, it ties in with this one, because if we have the Holy Spirit, and more and more of us believed in the Lord God by His prodding, we still would have one nation under God. But you have to ask, which God? The God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us set this dark on fire. In Jesus' holy name. We take just a moment to gather together a little bit of what our Lord God has given to us in abundance as we take in our offering. We're going to be praying for the special needs of our fellowship of faith. We have prayed for all of those who have served this country. How many we have in here that have served in the military or in some capacity? Many one. Who has served in the military here today? <coughs> we thank them for their service. And we prayed for the, the safe uh, passage of, of our soldiers wherever they might be across this globe. It's a hard job. Hard job. I just watched a little uh, YouTube snippet of these soldiers that were playing Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. It was enough to make you cry because they wish their family was there. But we're going to remember them again, and we're going to remember those who are ill, and we're going to remember our church in this world. 
<coughs> we do, Heavenly Father, come before You. We thank You for all that You provide for us. We thank You that You have given us Your Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to be able to change our lives far the better. But it's a hard road, Lord God, to take. It's not comfortable traveling upon it. It has twists and turns, and it's bumpy. And many times we don't know where we're going, but Your Spirit does. We ask that You be with us, Lord God, that we let go and let Him work in our lives. Work His magic in our lives. Work His thing so that we might truly be able to serve You. We might be able to prophesy. We might be able to show the glory that You have given to us, Lord God, and share that with other people. Thank You for His working, and thank You for His working in this church. We ask that You would continue to be here, that the Word might continue to be preached. And as we are calling a pastor, we hope um, in the near future that that Word would be preached in its purity. A biblical pastor, Lord God, that's what we need, someone to preach the Bible as You have given to us through Your Spirit. Enliven us, Lord God. Set our hearts on fire for You. Lord, in Your mercy. We pray for all those, Lord God, who are having difficulties. Um, we continue to pray for Matt Crum, who uh, wasn't able to come back this week, but is going to, to be able to come back home fairly soon. He's doing well, Lord God. They're just trying to get those medicines to work for him. Continue to be with him, Lord, and with his wife, Pam. We ask that you would be with Aaron Walter. She's going back and forth, Lord God. Send your angels down to watch over and protect her and be with her family as they are helping Dad and helping Grandpa. We ask that you would be with Nicole, who has been still struggling with some of the infections and some of the problems as a result of all the procedures and her, the difficulty she has had over these months. Give her a good measure of your healing touch and raise her up, Lord God, from being disappointed and disgruntled and remind her that you are still there and that you still care. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this world, Lord God, that you would be with all of those soldiers, wherever they might be, men and women who give of their lives. It's a very difficult job, Lord God, and it's a very frightening job now when things seem to be on the edge of the abyss. But you are still in control. We make a claim on that, Lord, that you send your spirit out into this world to work on world leaders so that your will might be done. We ask for peace, not because we can bring it about, but you can according to your divine will. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, Lord God, we pray to you, not because we are worthy, but we pray them in the blessed name of your Son. It's in his name that we live, and live forevermore. Amen. If you would, I'd like us to uh, rise as we're going to join together in the preface for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because now he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with the angels, the archangels, all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and in his blood. We pray these things, Lord, boldly, and we approach you with the words that your Son Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given unto death for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. true body of our Lord and Savior given unto death for our sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord poured out on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. May his true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life eternal. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to our Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given unto death on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of sins. Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you, and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I'll tell you what, let us remain standing and let's just sing verses 1 and 4 of hymn 506. Since the first verse is basically a Trinitarian verse by nature. So anyway, verses 1 and 4 of hymn 506. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good in his mercy. As the choir of angels sing, honor, riches, power, dominion. Glory, glory, glory to the King. A blessed and safe uh, Memorial Day weekend to all of you. Is there anything that we need to remember in our church? Any announcements? If not, go in peace and serve your Lord with gladness. <laughs>